Are we at Joshua 1? Are we at verse 1? Let's read verses 1 through 9 together. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Have not I commanded thee, be strong. Look at your neighbor and say, be strong. And of a good courage. It says, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. For just a few moments, I'd like to speak from this topic, this theme, or this subject. Being encouraged during troubling times. Being encouraged during troubling times. Again, if you don't mind, help me to present this message today. Look at your neighbor to your left or to your right and say, neighbor, the pastor's going to share today. Being encouraged during troubling times. If you don't mind looking at somebody on the other side. Neighbor, Neighbor. pastor's going to share today. Be encouraged, Be encouraged. During, troubling during troubling times. Trouble in my way. Troubling times. I do have to get us to understand something in the midst of these troubling times. And that is, nobody ever said that we wouldn't have some trouble every now and then. Nobody said it was going to be peaches and cream all the time. Nobody ever said, Deacon Wise, it would be happy, happy, joy, joy all the time. And there are times in our lives when things when people, when situations, and when circumstances can have an effect on us, and we can become discouraged. I've learned and I'm learning that even in these tough pandemic times that we're in right now, there's a lot of information and misinformation 
about the necessity and the effectiveness of the COVID-19 vaccines. There's a lot of information and misinformation about mask wearing and the pushback from people who don't want to wear them. You know, we always talk about we live in a free society. You know, but we have a problem when somebody's doing something that we don't want them to do or, or if I'm doing something, I don't want nobody telling me what I'm going to do because we say we live in a free society. Truth of the matter is we couldn't live in this society alone. Think about that. We couldn't do this alone. No, no man is an island. See, I, I, I need somebody to stock the shelves at the store so I can go get something to eat. I'm just keeping it real. I, I, need, I need the guy in the gas truck to, to make his way to the gas station so that I can pull up and put gas in my car. See, I, I can't do this by myself. But we have a lot of people who have issues concerning mask wearing today. There's a lot of information and misinformation within our school systems across the country that are making decisions they believe are in the best interest of the children. And then you have parents who say, but I'm the parent. I know what's best for my child. We, we've got a lot of troubling times going on right now. And if there's ever a time when we need to work together, it's definitely right now. And right now, my brothers and sisters, again, in the midst of this pandemic, we're hearing about what is happening in Ukraine, whereby it will, in fact, have a global impact on our economies, a global impact on financial institutions, a global impact on oil and gas prices. It's going to have an effect on food prices as well. And, and if it continues on, numerous lives can and will be lost in this escalation. Troubling times. The Bible records for us that in the last days that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Well, we heard about this thing some time ago. It was a rumor then. It's reality now. It's happening right before our very eyes. And I will submit to you from a biblical standpoint that when that scripture was written in the book of Matthew, it wasn't talking about right before the rapture of the church. It was a reference to the second coming of Christ after the rapture had taken place and the seven years of tribulation were over when Jesus would come back and set foot on planet earth again. My point being this, if all of these things are happening right now and they're, they're leading up to the second coming of Christ, then the rapture of the church must be close. Amen. We're playing around. Living, I think uh, Cedric the Entertainer said, all willy-nilly. <laughs> Doing what we think we're big and bad enough to do. Trying to live like we want to live and not realize just how close the time of the return of, of the Messiah for the rapture is. We had a conference here recently and one speaker said he was in a, a, a meeting and, and, that, and somewhere in that meeting somebody said they believe we are one generation away from Christianity leaving planet earth. Amen. When the salt gets up out of here, when the church gets up out of here, Christianity goes as well. So that tells me that we must be one generation away from the rapture of the church. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to hear that. This man, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't want to scare nobody. But if I, if I can scare you, if I can scare you, I want to scare hell right out of you. My brothers and my sisters, we are indeed living in some troubling times, 
And if we're not careful, we will allow our surroundings and our current situations dictate to us how we feel and how we proceed in this life. When actually we should be leaning and depending on God and his power for direction on a daily basis. There's a very familiar passage of scripture found in the book of Proverbs. Chapter number three, verses five and six. And there it tells us to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. It goes on to say, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. You see, the reason why this is so important is because the devil will use whatever tactics, devices, and unfortunately people to keep us so focused on the things that are happening around us that we won't spend enough time with the one who made us. I wish I had a witness today. Concerning the devil, Dr. Herbert Lockyer writes, and I quote, he says, The devil, he is the author of persecution and tribulation and afflicts the bodies of men, unquote. Another man by the name of Dr. Henry C. Thiessen, he adds, and I quote him, he says, He is evil, talking about the devil, he's evil, he's wicked, he's cruel and tyrannical over all that he can control. Notice the word can here. And, and can has a reference to him being allowed to control. So it says that he's tyrannical over all that he can control. And he is out to do evil wherever possible. Unquote. You see, the devil will do whatever he can to bring trouble our way. And he will do his very best to try to discourage us. There are days when I am discouraged. But I'm so glad I know God has a way of encouraging me. He, he, he reminds me of who he is. He, he reminds me of what he can do. He reminds me of what he's already done. He reminds me that he's God and God all by himself. He, he reminds me that he sits on the circle of the earth. He, he reminds me that he spoke and things came into existence. He reminds me that no matter how discouraged I may be sometimes, he is my ultimate encourager. You see, the way I see it, being discouraged, and I need y'all to hear this, being discouraged is not of God. I need to let that marinate for a second. You know, that, that's just like, that's just like when, when we're scared all the time. You know, the Bible said God has not given us a spirit of fear. So if God doesn't give the spirit of fear, where is it coming from? And all he wants to do is scare us and discourage us. So if we're operating in discouragement and, and, and I've done it, I've been there, I, I feel like I'm there for, right now. Uh, only because uh, I'm trying to do what God, I believe, wants done. And in the midst of all of that, there are things that are coming up against me, both physically and spiritually. But I'm so thankful that God has power over physical and spiritual. And guess what that does? That encourages me. I'm so glad that I'm not fighting this fight. This, this is, is God's fight. I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But what I'm trying to say, I guess, is that if we know God like we say we know God, and if we know God and his power like we say we know God, and if we know God and his power, 
promises like we say we know God and his promises, then we don't have a reason nor an excuse to be discouraged. Let me help you understand some things. As a pastor, as a pastor, I could easily become discouraged. When I look around sometimes and, and the seats in the sanctuary are not occupied during Sunday morning worship. I know we're in a pandemic. I understand that. But I also know that God has called us to assemble ourselves and to take the steps necessary to safely assemble ourselves. But, but I would tell you, my brothers and sisters, that I remember during the early part of this pandemic, when it was just me and the media ministry in here on Sunday mornings, doing what God has assigned us to do, I could have become discouraged preaching to seats. But I'm so thankful I was preaching to people who were watching on live stream. Again, as a pastor, I can easily become discouraged when I look around sometimes and I see that Bible study attendance and Sunday school attendance seems to be dropping off. Again, these are opportunities for us individually and collectively to grow in God, to grow closer to God, to know him better, to help us, especially during our troubling times. I can easily become discouraged when I look around and it seems to me that our financial giving has not reached anticipated goals. But I will let you know, Mesa View, that God has blessed us and he is blessing us because in the midst of this pandemic, God didn't skip a beat. Every bill paid. Every opportunity and responsibility we had to take care of things were taken care of. And the fact that those things were done and God has blessed us to have resources to do more things. A lot of churches closed down during the pandemic, but praise God, Mesa View is still here. And again, I can easily become discouraged when I consider that we're not utilizing this campus and the resources that God has blessed us with up to the capacity that it could be utilized. And there comes a time when you've got to ask yourself the question. And the question is, am I doing what I'm doing because this is what I want to do? Or because God has given me a mandate to get it done. We all have to ask ourselves that question. Because God didn't save us to do nothing. He saved us to get busy for his kingdom's glory. And that means that we're all have, we all have an assignment in God to do kingdom work. We don't all have the same work, but we do have work that needs to be done. And we have to ask ourselves, am I doing it because this is what I want to do? Or am I doing it because this is what God has assigned me to do? Is this what God made me for, for such a time as this? Dr. Henry Blackaby writes, and I quote, he says, once you understand God's call to an assignment, he says, obey him. Obey him. And he, meaning God, will work through you to accomplish his purposes. Unquote. And of course, the key here is to understand that the work you do is not your work at all. It's God's work. And God is so awesome that he wants to work through us to get his work done. And knowing that God wants to use us to get this work done is evidence of God's power and God's guidance in the fact that he is around us. 
And we cannot and should not get discouraged when things seem to be working against us. Let me help you understand. I'm preaching to me right now. So y'all just, y'all just in, enjoy the ride. I'm preaching to me right now. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for blessing me with what you just shared with me. So for just a few minutes, let's talk about being encouraged during troubling times. Today our text is found in the book of Joshua. Concerning this book, Dr. J. Vernon McGee writes, and I quote, The book of Joshua completes the redemption of Israel that was begun in Exodus. Exodus is the book of redemption out of Egypt. Joshua is the book of redemption into the promised land. Unquote. And again, here in chapter 1, Joshua has become discouraged. Let every heart say discouraged. Joshua has become discouraged because of the death of Moses. And now he recognizes and realizes the monumental task that is before him. And understanding Joshua's journey can help our journey. So if you don't mind, let's look at the text. There's three things that I want to look at. I want to start all the way down in verse 5. Because down in verse 5 it says, There shall not be any man, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Just as I was with Moses, he tells Joshua, I'll be with you. Point number one, know that God will take care of you. Know that God will take care of you. He says, I'll be there. If he's there, guess what? He's taking care of us. That's the way I see it. So in this verse, God is letting Joshua know that even though he's mourning the death of Moses, and is not sure what to expect in the future. God emphasizes that when trouble shows up, he will take care of Joshua. So guess what that tells us? When trouble shows up, he's going to take care of us too. Because when you understand the immutability of God, which means that God doesn't change, just like he took care of Joshua, he's going to take care of us too. Because it speaks to the character and the attributes of God. He, whatever he does for Joshua, he'll do for us. Because that's who God is. And I believe there's at least two things that we can glean from this passage of scripture. Number one, it says that no one will be able to stand up against you. You see, we, we got to understand that, it, that the fights that we're in are not even our fights. Come on, y'all, they're God's fights. If we're doing what God requires, if we're operating the way God wants us to operate, guess what? It's not our fight. Now, if we're doing this thing our way, then it becomes our way. If we're doing what God requires, guess what? It's not our fight. Please look at somebody and say it's not our fight. When you have God on your side, who can really come up against you? Hello, somebody. You see, nobody is capable of beating God. Nobody has done it in the past, and nobody will ever do it in the future. God lets us know just how awesome he is in Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 20 through 22. I need y'all to walk with me on that. It says, thou art my battle axe. That's a song, y'all. He's a battle axe. When? In times of Lord, have mercy. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee I will break in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. I can't do it by myself, but with God on my side, he enables us to be able to deal with those who come up against us. Verse 21 says, And with thee I will break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. 22 says, With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman, 
and with thee I will break in pieces old and young. Lord, have mercy. And with thee I will break in pieces the young man and the maid. It sounds to me like God covered everything and everybody. Because he says, I'm a battle axe. And when God is our battle axe, and when God is our war club, if you will, he can take care of any enemy, any trouble, any trial, any tribulation, any circumstance that may come up against us. Again, remember that God will take care of you. The second thing we can glean from this passage of Scripture is God says, I will not fail you. God said, I will not fail you. Let's be real. Maybe I'm speaking from my reality, but let's be real. There are many people that have let us down. And they've let us down from time to time. And as a result of being let down, we've been hurt. Oh, yeah, I ain't been hurt? I'm speaking from my reality. I've been hurt, and I've been disappointed. Help us, Holy Ghost. I've been disappointed by their actions. But, but one thing, one thing that we can have the assurance of is that God will not fail you. You see, when people come short, God still goes all the way. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There was a time when God made a promise. And the promise was, I'm going to give you water for you and for your cattle. God said, I'm going to do this. How did he do it? He said, hey, Moses, I need you to speak to the rock. And so Moses gets down there, and guess what? People disappointed him. People vexed him. People helped him find his last nerve. God told him to speak to the rock so that the people could see the power of God being revealed right before their very eyes. But because Moses got discouraged and Moses got disappointed and Moses got hurt and Moses got frustrated, guess what he did? He took the stick and he hit the rock. And when he hit the rock, God's promise still came forth because he said, I'm going to provide water. So he provided water for the people and he provided water for the cattle, just like he said. What am I trying to say? When God makes a promise, he always comes through with the promise. And the promise here in the word is that he said, I will not fail you. God lets us know what he's able to do. God lets us know how he can do some things. Joseph understood that very same principle and promise because his own brothers sold him into slavery. Potiphar's wife lied on him. Lord have mercy. The baker in prison forgot about him. But through it all, God never failed Joseph. He spoke in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20 is there. He says, but as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. You see, when people got it out for you, to bring it even to your destruction, God has a way to turn that tragedy into a triumph. That's why we've always got to be encouraged during troubling times. Secondly, we can glean from the text here down in verse 7, and the second point I want to deal with is know that God encourages you. When nobody else will, God will encourage you. Amen. Verse 7, what does it say there? Only be thou strong and very courageous. He's encouraging right there. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Goes on to say that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. God will encourage us. 
Can you imagine what, what was going through the mind of Joshua concerning the work and assignment that was before him? You see, he had been spending all of his time supporting Moses to get the people to the promised land. And if you think about it, we're talking about really 40 years of supporting Moses. And in his head, in his mind, he believed that Moses was the one that was going to get them into the promised land. But because of the stick and the rock incident, God said, you'll see it, but you won't go into it. So we've got to be very careful because we'll miss out on some blessings as a result of being discouraged and even disappointed sometimes. He had been supporting Moses all of this time. Now he's at a point where he needed support. And I've learned, brothers and sisters, and I need y'all to capture this with me. I've learned that God will not assign a mission to you and let you fail in it. Think about that. That's, that's heavy, y'all. That's deep. Because, again, God wants to work through us to get his work done. And as long as we're abiding in God and doing what God wants done, guess what? He's going to, it's like an onion, he's going to remove those layers. Whatever's in the way, he's going to get them out of the way. So that you can accomplish that which he's called and commissioned you to do. You see, while we may sometimes ponder the seriousness and the magnitude of the task at hand that God has assigned to us, God is the one who encourages us through it all. Even in the text, he says, only be thou strong and very courageous. You see, this is God speaking. I'm talking about the almighty one. I'm talking about the one who is from everlasting to everlasting. I'm talking about the one who is the alpha and the omega. I'm talking about the one who provides for us. I'm talking about, y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the one who sanctifies us. I'm talking about the one who justifies us. I'm talking about the one who actually reconciles us, who brought us back, redeemed us to be in a place where he wants us to be. I'm talking about the one who's got all power in his hand and now he's the one talking to Joshua telling Joshua to be strong and very courageous you see Joshua was faced with troubling times but God encouraged him in the book of Deuteronomy Moses was talking to the children of Israel right before his death and he told them that God would be with them we find this in Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 6, which reads, Be strong and of a good courage. So there must, there must be a bad courage out there. If Moses says a good courage. Well, what's a bad courage? I don't know. I'll get back to that later. I'm, I'm talking about the God who encourages us, so it must be a good courage. Amen? Maybe that bad courage is the one that, that helps us to do things that's contrary to the word of God. Some people even call it liquid courage. Uh-huh. That's your amen. Because y'all heard that one before. But what does it say? Deuteronomy 31 and 6. It says, be strong and of a good courage. Then he says, fear not, nor be afraid of them. The Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, is what Moses shares with us here. And we may all be in a place where we're faced with troubling times during life as life presents itself to us. But we must be reminded of the fact that we have a God that loves us. I need to say that again. We have a God that loves us. We have a God that loves us. And he loves us so much that he encourages us through those troubling times. Look at somebody and tell them God loves you. And then down in verse number nine, it says, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou 
goers. Third and final point today, number three, know that God is with you. Yeah, that just must have shouted when he went right over your head. Know that God is with you. We forget that sometimes when we find ourselves being discouraged. We forget that sometimes when we realize that troubling times are right in our faces. We forget that sometimes when we're going through the troubles of life. But we must come to an understanding and we've got to realize that God is indeed with us in the midst of those troubling times. You don't really have to go far to see it either. You can look in one book in particular and find God doing some amazing things. In the book of Daniel, we'll find that even while he was in the den of lions, he wasn't alone because God was with him. You know, you, 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 you got to understand that God is with us in the midst of our troubling times. But note, if you will, that God is repeating himself to Joshua here in verse 9. And I say that because in verse 6 he says, be thou strong and of a good courage. And then in verse 7 he says, only be thou strong and very courageous. And now in verse 9 he's repeating himself again to Joshua. And one thing I've learned about God, when God repeats himself, he really wants us to get the message. He wants us to understand what he's saying. So here three times in just chapter one of Joshua, God told him to be strong and of a good courage or be courageous. And now he's reminded, have not I commanded thee? Didn't you hear me the first two times? Come on, Joshua, were you paying attention? You know, back in Louisiana, we would say, you heard me? But I don't know about you. Again, I don't know about you, but I've learned, I've learned that there are times in our lives when we get in the thick of things that we need to be reminded of the one who is truly with us and for us. Truly with us and for us. The preacher's outline in Sermon Bible says here, and I quote, they say, to encourage and assure Joshua, God gave him the promise of his continued unbroken presence. That's powerful, y'all. That, 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 that says God didn't tell him, I'm going to be with you only Monday through Friday. And then God took the weekend off. It says unbroken presence, which meant that he said, I'm, I will be with you all the time. It goes on to say God promised that he would go with Joshua wherever he went, never forsaking or leaving him. Unquote. Again, the Bible teaches us in Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 31. It says there, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. David goes on to share with us in Psalms 37 and verse number 25. It says, I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. You see, the promises of God goes beyond time and trouble. And we can have the assurance of knowing that God can and will be encouraging us during those troubling times. So in closing, my brothers and sisters, I realize and I understand that we are going to face troubling times. If you haven't experienced them, all I can tell you is keep living. Because they are indeed on their way to knock on your door. To, to let you know that troubling times do exist. But we want to be and we need to be encouraged that God will be with us through those troubling times. You see, I know this to be true 
Because God's track record speaks for itself. Let me share with you some things that God has done. You see, God was with Moses when he told Moses to stand there and God parted the Red Sea. You see, Moses couldn't part it by himself. God, Moses couldn't part it at all. God had to do the work through Moses so that the people could see the power of God revealed right before their eyes. Don't, don't you think that was some troubling times? You got the Red Sea in front and Pharaoh and his army behind and they're trying to figure out what are we going to do and where are we going to go? And then what did God say? God, God said, Moses, I need you to just grab your stick, go stand over there and put both your arms up and watch me be God. And when he did that, he split the Red Sea wide open. And to show you just how awesome our God is, they did not go slushing across the Red Sea in a bunch of mud. When God split the Red Sea, he dried the ground for them so that they can make their way to the other side. You see, when God does it, God does it. I wish I had a witness today. You got to understand that God was right there with Elijah. When the 450 prophets of Baal came up against him. And, and Elijah said, well, we're going to figure out which God is the real God. We're going to set up an altar and we're going to start praying and ask our God to send fire down from heaven. And the 450 prophets of Baal started praying. And they started praying in the morning and nothing happened. And they prayed in the afternoon and nothing happened. They prayed towards the evening time and nothing happened. Started cutting themselves because they wanted to make sure that their God was out there. And then Elijah started haggling them, if you will, and said, well, maybe your God sleep. Maybe your God don't hear you right now. So then uh, Elijah said, now we got the altar here. What I want y'all to do is put some water on the altar. And then what I want you to do is put some water on the altar. And matter of fact, while you're at it, put some more water on the altar. I want you to see this thing is soaking wet. And I want you to see the power of my God. And then Elijah started praying. And he started calling from the God of heaven to send fire down. And when God sent the fire down, he sent the fire onto the altar. And the Bible says he licked up all the water that was in the ground as well. I'm telling you when God does it, God does it. We got to understand that God was with Gideon when Gideon was told by God to reduce his army from over 30,000 to 300. And God told him to take that whole thing down. They got some folks in there who was with him, but they weren't with him. And my whole thing is they, they were there physically, but their hearts and their minds were not in it. And God said, I need you to get rid of all of them. And so God took him down to 300 and Gideon's looking around like, man, this ain't a whole lot of people. But when God is on your side, during troubling times, he'll show you what he's able to do. And God used those 300 and they destroyed the enemy that was coming up against you. See, God don't need a whole lot of people. God is just looking for a whole lot of faith. Help us, Holy Ghost. God was there with the three Hebrew boys when they were in the fiery furnace. Took them in there, put him in the fiery furnace. King went up couldn't sleep because it was troubling him that they had taken those three Hebrew boys and put them in the fiery furnace. He came down. He looked around and he saw that they were still in the midst of the fire and there was no burn on them. Even to the point, because again, when God does it, God does it. In the midst of the fire, there was no smoke on them. No smoke smell. No smoke residue. But then he looked down and said, did not we throw in three? But I see four. And the fourth one looks like the son of God. 
You see, you got to understand something here. That when you're going through your troubling times, you're not going through your troubling times all alone. Because God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be right there when the heat starts getting hot all around you. I'm almost through. He was with Jonah when he was in the belly of the whale. He was with Nehemiah when he was rebuilding the walls around Jerusalem. He was with Paul and Silas while they were in jail. Matter of fact, Paul and Silas let us know what happens at a prayer meeting. Because they were locked up. They were locked up and Lord have mercy. They were locked up. They were in what some would call confinement. I'm talking about way deep down where nobody can get to you. And as a result of that, they just started praying and praising God. Let me help somebody here. They were in jail. And because they were in jail, they were dealing with some troubling times. But when you know Jesus, when you know the power of Almighty God, even when you locked up, you're not completely locked down. I wish y'all would hear me in this place. Paul and Silas started praying and praising God and the Bible said there was a great earthquake that the walls started shaking and every man's bands were loose. Why? Because they called upon Almighty God. Because when you got trouble going on, just call on the name of the Lord and watch him deal with your trouble. I need a witness right now to know that when trouble shows up, God is already there. So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, be thou strong and of a good courage. Be thou strong and of a good courage. Be thou strong and of a good courage because God is in the trouble business. You might have to sing that song from time to time. Trouble in my way. I got to pray sometimes. You might have to say trouble in my way. I got to moan sometimes. You do know that when you're moaning, the devil don't quite know what you're moaning about. He can't figure out that moaning tongue that you're speaking at that time. Mm -hmm. Somebody, somebody need to know that Jesus is Lord. I wish I had a witness today. Trouble in my way. You got to cry sometimes. You got to get that thing out of your body. Get it out of your spirit. Get it out of your presence. Take that load off. Because when you know Jesus, he's got the power to fix it after a while. Being encouraged during troubling times. We got to understand that even when Jesus was put on Calvary's cross, there were some people that were discouraged. But Jesus encouraged them when he said, you tear down this temple. And in three days, I'll raise it up again. You see, up to that point, Jesus hadn't lied about anything. So what would make them think he was lying about this as well? But there are times when it looks impossible to us because we can't see the outcome. But we don't have to see it. We just got to have the faith to believe it. And when we believe it, we can see the power of Almighty God. They hung him high. Come on, y'all. They stretched him wide. Come on, y'all. It was on Calvary's cross where our Savior died. They placed the Lord in a borrowed tomb. And if you follow through the Gospels, you will find that some were even saying, what are we going to do now? 
Because our Messiah is dead. You see, they were discouraged during their troubling times. But I've heard that early on a Sunday morning, there was a rumbling that took place. And the rumbling was a rock was removed off of the rock because on the inside was the rock. Y'all don't hear me this morning. And when that stone rolled out the way, Jesus came out the grave just like he said he would. I told y'all when God do it, God do it. He came out the grave with all power in his hands. I need y'all to help me right there. Look at somebody and say all power in his hands. Say it again. All power in his hands. One more again. All power in his hands. We need that information to be encouraged during troubling times. 